I am Tricia Stafford Odom. I'm the head women's basketball coach at North Carolina Central. Um, I spent time in the WNBA. I played for the Houston Comets, and I also played for the Miami Soul. I'm Tanisha Lewis, assistant coach here at North Carolina Central University. I played for the Houston Comets, Minnesota Lynx, and the Charlotte State. I'm Elena Larkins, I'm an assistant women's basketball coach, and I also played for the Houston Comets. No, I didn't. Know. Nah. <laughs> no, um, I played for the New York Liberty, the Indiana Fever, and the Minnesota Lynx. All right, coaches, nice. playing in the WNBA, which is a great, great league. What are some of your moments playing in the WNBA? Favorite moments playing in the WNBA? My favorite moment was playing in the WNBA. <laughs> Just the fact I actually can recall, I think I was with the Houston Comets, laying on the floor, one of my first games, near center court, laying on the floor. I was pretending like I was stretching, but I was kind of trying to hold back tears because thank God, like, I'm here. Like so many young ladies are trying to get here, so many have gotten cut. Yolanda Adams sang the national anthem of my very first game, Ooh. and yeah, that was pretty sweet. My championship in 2012. Man, we knew she was gonna say that. We don't deal with it. National anthem. I'm saying, I'm talking about. I'm just sitting here and being. And you mentioned that championship. What was your one of your favorite moments um, during that run? Hearing everybody say how Minnesota was going 3 0 us, and then we looked up and it was 3 1 us. Um, priceless. I mean, that was a great Minnesota Lynx team. That was a younger Simone, um, a younger Lindsey Whalen, Maya, a very young Maya Moore. Um, I don't think they had Sylvia Powell's until the second time we played them, but the, Rebecca Brunson was there. So they had a great, a great core, a great coach, and we just did the impossible to other people. We knew, we knew inside that we could do it. So. We know each league has some characters and been around you all. We've seen your personality. What are some of the funniest teammates that you played with in the WNBA? I'm going to go me, with Tynesha Lewis okay, is pretty doggone funny. What, that would have been me. Um, we had some side jokes on the bench. On we the had bench. some side jokes when we came in. The game, talking about Van Chancellor. You know, he had nicknames for all of us. He had hand signals. But another one of my teammates with the comments that was pretty doggone funny was uh, Kelly Gibson. She's now an assistant assistant coach at Syracuse, and uh, she was dog not funny. Yeah, Kelly. I probably have Kelly? to say Erica Wheeler. Um, just a just a ball of ball of joy, energetic every time you've seen her. Always laughing, joking, smiling. Um, half the time people couldn't understand her because they said, you know, she was from down south in Miami, so she didn't enunciate and pronounce all the words. She would cut it off, but she always had everybody laughing and smiling. Everybody has a, a welcome to the league moment. You know, you talked about your first moments as well, but it was that moment when you realized you made it or you realized that, okay, this, this might be something different playing in the WNBA. Yeah, I think I got my. You got yours? Go ahead, Ty. Um, <clears throat> we were playing the LA Sparks, and then I got in the game, and um, I just come off a ball screen. And down that down. And <laughs> come off a ball screen, left my defender back there. I'm feeling good about myself, right? I go through the middle, I see Lisa Leslie, I was like, I'm going to just finger roll this right over her. <laughs> and she sent it to the third row. <laughs> and she looked at me and said, welcome to the league, rookie. That was my welcome mat to the WNBA. Oh, man, that's a good one. That was sweet, wasn't it? So that's funny. Sweet. Welcome. Well, she gave you a nice welcome. So one of mine, I don't, I don't know if it was the welcoming moment, but we all see some highlights right now and vintage stuff of the WNBA. Lisa Leslie, as she retired, as she you know, excels in her career, they show her dunking a WBA game. Well, at that moment, I was on the Miami Soul team. We went home. That's my home. We would go to L.A. You know, I'm thinking, this is my home. Lisa, you here. We cool. We grew up together, but it's my team. Welcome back, Miami Soul, baby. So I ended up getting a game. Um, I was playing really good defense. I went double down on Lisa, got the double team, got the steal. We go down court. I think I blew the layup, but that's okay. I was excited. Um, another moment, <coughs> we're in the game. Lisa breaks out for uh, a fast break basket. So we get a turnover and I'm turning to chase. And this chick rises up and dunks. So the highlight reel shows me at half court trailing a play trying to catch her, but I wasn't really trying to catch her because she was my friend. I knew she was going to try it at some point. So basically Miami Soul team got dunked on and I'm on a highlight because I was trailing the play. So we go back, they call a timeout, the crowd's going crazy. Lisa got a great dunk. I think the first woman in the WNBA to dunk. She's sitting on the way of the bench. I look down and I'm like, 
because <laughs> that's a personal friend, and it was a big, a big move for women's sports. So it's fun. I don't have a welcome to the league moment. Not that I can remember. Um, if anything, I could remember it was, hey, rookies can you know grab this bag? Can you do this? Can you do that? So um, that was the Hazen. welcome to the league. You know, we don't we we know what you did in college. Um, and we know what you're capable of doing here. However, we still need to remind you that this is your first year and these are some things that you need to do. So I would mm. say that's probably my welcoming moment to the league. No <laughs> hazing, but just, you know, Humbling. grab some bags or, or bring, I used to have to bring food in New York every game. I don't care if they ate it or not. I was a rookie too, didn't really have money, but I had to do it. So welcome to the league. So you played in the WNBA and now you're all coaching here on the same staff here in North Carolina Central. What can you take from playing in the WNBA and what's really been able to help to teach these student athletes? I think it makes, uh, makes players more coachable. I, I think I would love to believe that they see that we've been somewhere we hope they aspire to go. And I, I would like to think it makes them more coachable. So now I'm going to listen to her or her because she's been there. I mean, she's played at the highest level, no question about it. Um, I mean, from the collegiate career to the WNBA career, from Final Four to WNBA championships, from playing on a team that had won three championships in a row. Um, like, we should have some value in what we say. There should be some validity. So I think to some degree, when we open our mouths, we, we take command and, and the players listen to us. Um, because we're talking about what we know and not just what we've heard. So how physical the game is going to be, how uh, mental the game is going to be, how some people just excel because mentally they're stronger. So we were able to say that and they think we actually know what we're talking about. And coach as well with you being a WNBA player and on the staff with two other WNBA players, does that help out with recruiting at all? Well. Um, I would love to believe that when people are looking at North Carolina Central women's basketball, they see something that is happening nowhere else in the country. I do not know another staff, D1, D2, D whatever it wants to be, that has a staff loaded with experienced and knowledgeable players. So does it help me? Um, I would like to think so. If it doesn't, the world is wrong <laughs> because, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm surrounded by greatness. I'm surrounded by by a staff that I know has gone through some things, um, has had some doors shut in their faces, and they know how to deal with being cut, being ridiculed, being being on the stage. Anxiety. I know they know how to deal with it. So yes, they can relate to my you know 15 or 16 players with a whole bunch of knowledge, value, and experience. So again, when you look at my staff, I would love to think you look at our staff and. You say, oh my God, I want to play in the league. I'm sure they're, they played with players uh, that are now coaching in the WNBA. So Erlena can pick the phone up and call people that are coaching. Um, Tynesha can pick the phone up and call people that are scouting for the WNBA team. So as can I. So um, you would think it holds a lot of weight. Coach Garkin's going back into playing in the WNBA. 22 boards. It's a big game. What do you remember about that? That was a, a career high for you and a franchise record. What do you remember about that game? Uh, I just remember going out there and playing with the confidence that coach, um, coach gave me. I remember being down. We squandered a home court advantage against Atlanta in the, uh, the first round. And she came to me and she said, hey, you know, I need you to start. I was just like, uh, OK, coach. Like, I don't know, it was random to me. I didn't expect it. It was right before the game, like, you know, three or four hours. And I just remember going out there and having the game of my life and playing like I knew coach believed in me and doing what I was capable of doing. I was on the team for that reason, mm. to get rebounds. Um, so that was, I was a blue collar worker. I could score when needed, but I accepted my role. So I just went and played out of my mind because it's you win or you go home. Mm -hmm. That happened to us twice. You know, we were, um, we lost Katie Douglas in our, I think it was our second game against the Connecticut Sun, like literally the first minute, if that. And we had to have people come off the bench. And Tina Charles was on that team at the time. Um, and I remember thinking, man, I know that we are just going to come out here and do something because Katie at the time was in her late 30s. She was almost done. And to just have her go out like that and not be able to, to play with us, it just gave me a different boost of energy. So mm. um, I just went out there and I played for each other first and foremost, and then myself. 
and everything else just came into play. <laughs> 22, everything else. <laughs> I wish my everything else was 22. Yeah, you know <laughs> <laughs> That's big time. That's 22 miles. Big time. <laughs> Coach Ty, you were known for being a scorer in the league. I mean, hey. what's, it, what's it like being able to go out and play at the highest level and know that you're going to be able to fill it up any, any day you go out there? Um. You know, it's what we do. You know, like that. You know, we just coming, growing up in a small town. Um, we always been the underdog. You know, so you, so you always went out there to prove something. So whoever, wherever, it didn't matter if it was in middle school, high school, playing against the boys in the neighborhood, or playing against the at the highest level. You gave everything you had and let the chips fall where they may. Coach Trish, you, you're wearing the T-shirt. It says, do your part. I mean, yes. what did that motto mean to you all playing in the WNBA, and how does that translate here at North Carolina Central? This is something I, I would like to think I just came up with this year. Uh, this, is, this is my mindset um, because there's so many areas that people have responsibility, and, and if they neglect to do their responsibility, it messes up the entire team, uh, whether it's sports, academics, chores at home with my little boys, Mari and Trajan. He didn't do it and it doesn't get done and all that stuff. But what it means to me is to take pride in what the gift is given to me and, and what I'm expected to accomplish. Like do it, do it to perfection, whatever it may be. And I, and I would like to believe it helps the whole to become better. Being here at North Carolina Central, um, I mean, we just take it to another level. I'm able to coach that way. My assistants are able to talk to players and say, hey, as position coaches, look, this is the guard. We expect you to not turn the ball over, have a flawless you know, offensive production as far as taking care of the ball. Um, we expect you to get stops defensively and get every rebound. If you do that, then now we can coach the other four what their responsibilities are. And then when everybody's coached up, we present a better product. So uh, I'm excited about the model Do Your Part, DYP. I'm excited about my staff because I think I've grown as a coach to become um, wise enough to assign certain areas that um, now we've got checks and balances and now I think I've put people in areas where their strengths uh, flourish and we're easier to, to be better when we do it together. I want you to go back. What was it like while you were waiting to see who you're going to play for, you get drafted, get the call. What do you remember about that? It's easiest for me to start with that because it wasn't a draft process for me. I'm still waiting to hear that name. That's about 20-something years ago. <laughs> <laughs> because at that time, for me, I came in on as a free agent. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was not because of the school I went to, not because of a connection my college coach had. I literally had to work my way, go through camp. Uh, Kevin Cook was an assistant coach who saw me, believed in me, brought me to their training camp. I bust my butt. I mean, I had to play Lisa Leslie. I think Cheryl Swoops is around. Cynthia Cooper had just retired. Um, Jeanette Arcane. So I had to play among some players and prove my worth um, and prove that a little kid from California um, belonged. Um, I wasn't placed there, but I earned my way there, um, so to speak. So. Didn't hear the name calling, but the day I got an official jersey, um, it validated it for me. And the tears flowed because I know I worked to be there. I didn't just dream it, but I worked for it. The name calling stuff is awesome to watch. <laughs> I should have won the first round, but that's, that's <laughs> no here. It's no here, no there. People make mistakes. It's no big deal. Um, I was in full line, I think, because uh, I, I, the first round had went, and I was like, I want my name. You know what I'm saying? What's going on? So I went to get a Pepsi and some Doritos. And then my phone rang and it was Van Chancellor's like, Tanisha, <laughs> this Van Chancellor's for the Houston Comets. You want to play for the Comets? I said, yes. And then I ran up and down food line throwing Doritos <laughs> and Pepsi everywhere. So that's sort of kind of how mine worked out. <laughs> so um, it was pretty cool. Mine was a little bit more of a nerve wracking experience. Um, I had just come off a senior season. We made it to the Elite Eight, and we lost. And there was a lot of talk about who was going to go where. So I was sitting there. And as I was sitting there, the team that everybody projected me to go to, it, I, it passed. So I was just sitting there waiting. I'm like, OK. I didn't know who I fit with or what. I was just looking for my name to be called. So it was 14 teams. And I'll never forget, because Toy and I went back to back. 13 and 14. Um, she was drafted to Phoenix and I was drafted to um, 
to New York. So it was nerve wracking and it was exciting once I finally heard my name, like, okay, she's, you know, it's, I'm, I'm finally here. Um, now that I've been drafted, now what do, what do I do next? <laughs> Coaches, we're sitting here inside McDougal McClendon Arena. The goals are up. We put a basketball in front of you right now. Game to 21, who's winning? E. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, there we go. Bring it down. I need that. Why, why do you give it to her? Because she plays entirely too hard right now <laughs> for me, you know. For my so age for bracket. My, for my age bracket, no. Mm -mm. I'm not playing that hard. Man, it's her, not. No way. You know, uh-uh. Her leg. I like my That's Achilles and my knees, and my, my ligaments are still in the same place. <laughs> intact. They were intact. So the reason why, let's just be honest, because she's the most conditioned person in this university probably right now, mm -hmm. and football just came out football season. But um, she's still a WNBA player. Mm -hmm. Like, the phone can ring any minute during this interview. She has the opportunity. She should still be playing. That's why, at a high level. So, you know, I'm maybe two, three months out of shape. Where she, I'm <laughs> <laughs> She three, ready. <laughs> I'm three, two and a half weeks. She old. ready. Yeah, that's she ready, that's ready. why. Your student athletes that are playing here right now, or for anybody else that's watching this that has dreams of playing in the WNBA, what would you all say to them? It's hard. It's 144 spots. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's 12 teams. I say keep your dreams. You can have those dreams, but um, the reality is it is hard. It's Sorry. difficult. Um, and even though you think you're there, you're not there. You have to keep going. It's a continuous evaluation process because of the contract setup, because of injuries, because of uh, people already on contract. It's just a difficult process. Not to be discouraged. You can do it, but be realistic about the numbers game, uh, the amount of teams. Um, the politics, too. The politics I mean, that have to be played. Yeah, you can get drafted and get cut. Yes. Like, it's not like the guy's side where they're guaranteed. You, they're guaranteed. Like, you could be drafted, in go into a camp, year. and be home in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So it gives you uh, live the moment. Like, there's, it's not AAU where there's another game. You better come to practice every single day, and you better put on your shoes every day. And you can do that and still. And still. Go. There we go. And so, still. You know, that's why I'm not worried about anything that ever happens in life. The WNBA <laughs> taught me that. Like, you always be ready for the next thing. You always be ready and be prepared and give all you have and see what happens. And live with that. People won't believe that I was cut. I was cut and then I didn't play for two years. And came back. And came shit. back the year I came back and won a championship. Was that Not because I couldn't play. I just didn't fit with this organization. Maybe some things happened, you know, mistakes as a, um, as a young athlete coming out of school. And nobody wanted to give me a chance. Nobody. And I sat here the first year and I worked out all summer. Never, I didn't get a call. I was discouraged. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to still work out the second year, but I'm going to live life as well. Man. And then Indiana called. And me being me, being me I'm like, What's to do in Indiana? It's kind of boring. <laughs> no, I mean, realistically speaking, I didn't know anything about it. Right. Um, and then, you know, Shavante Zellis was like, man, just come on. We were teammates in Turkey. Come on, come on, just come. Like, what else do you have to do? Like, <laughs> so I was like, all right. And then came there and had a great, great leader in Timmy Ketchins. Um, and I think that's what helped me after winning that championship with her. Because um, I was still in the organization for another three or four years after that. Um, did well. We actually went back to the finals in 2015, three years later. Not the same result. Um, lost in five games, so don't give up. It's relationships, man. Tamika Ketchins, isn't she like the she, GM she or something? She is now over the there? GM. So we all gonna be in Indiana soon. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Relationships. I just want tickets to the game to make. <laughs> I want gear. <laughs> Simple. Um, Amazing experience, though. Um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, um, there are some realities that, that become sad, though, in the WBA. Like I said, there are, there are tiered level of commitments. At some, some juncture, the new players get lesser money. So I'm going to take a new player so I can pay them less because a veteran demands more money. So the salary contracts, the way things are structured, that, takes, that, that has... Um, that has as much to do with being cut or being traded and removed as anything. So um, just don't get discouraged by your movement 
in a WNBA it doesn't mean you can't play. It doesn't mean you're not ready. But I'm still supposed to be starting for somebody. <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> I know. Man, yeah, she knows. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. All right, coaches, thank you very much. Very welcome. Go Eagles. DYP. DYP. <laughs> This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.